How did one Marilyn Monroe movie change the way we view blue jeans forever? Let's find out as we take a look back at some of the legendary star's most meaningful looks. In the 1954 film The Seven-Year Itch, Marilyn Monroe famously appears in a scene where her white dress is accidentally blown up around her legs when she walks over a subway grate in New York City. Sort of cools the ankles, doesn't it? The image of Monroe laughing and holding down her billowing skirt became a cultural phenomenon that is still widely recognized to this day. While we all know the dress, you may not know the story behind it. The famous scene was shot at 1 a.m. in New York City over a real subway grate. Apparently, it took around three hours to get the final shot. Over the course of the evening, up to 5,000 fans gathered to watch as filming took place. At the time, Monroe was married to baseball star Joe DiMaggio. As the photographer George S. Symbol once said, DiMaggio was apparently very upset by the scene, which he felt was a little too exhibitionist for his wife. He even stormed off the set. Rumor has it that the couple had a huge fight after the scene was shot, and he ended up filing for divorce soon after, all because of that dress. If Marilyn Monroe's white dress is her most famous look, then her second most famous outfit is probably the elegant pink gown she wears in the film Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, namely in the scene where she sings Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. The dress ended up in a massive Profiles in History auction in 2010. As the auction house CEO, Joe Maddalena, explained in an interview, the gown has an incredible legacy, which grew more and more meaningful as the years went on. The dress itself had been owned by a private collector since the 1960s, but its impact was seen everywhere, including Madonna's famous music video for Material Girl and the film Birds of Prey. According to Vogue, the dress eventually sold for almost $300,000. Marilyn Monroe didn't always dress like a glamorous bombshell. In fact, her favorite clothes to wear at home were incredibly laid back. Some people who worked with the legendary star even saw her natural sense of style as a little sloppy. Eventually, this way of dressing began to trouble those who worked with her. Photographer Milton Green was a close friend of Monroe who decided she needed a wardrobe makeover. According to the book Marilyn in Manhattan, Her Year of Joy, Green and his wife Amy were displeased with the clothes Monroe brought with her when she visited them in Connecticut in 1954. The actress, according to the Greens, had no sense of personal style, and she didn't seem to bother updating her attire. They helped her revamp her casual wardrobe, eventually working with designers to craft a sense of glamour even around the everyday clothes she wore. So next time you see a picture of Monroe in a laid-back outfit, remember there's more to the story. It's either a lazy look that her friends hated, or a carefully curated piece of wardrobe that came from the people in her life finally intervening. In 1953, Marilyn Monroe starred in the film Niagara. During one scene, she wears a bold, hot pink dress with a small cutout in the stomach area. While this garment may not be quite as iconic or memorable as some of Monroe's other looks, it does have a fascinating story. Would you mind playing this? According to Vogue, the dress was carefully designed by costumers Dorothy Jeekins and Charles Lemaire. They wanted to create a dress that would show Monroe's character's fiery, flamboyant personality. They first considered dressing her in red, but realized that hot pink was the best option. In fact, Monroe wore this pink dress just a few months before wearing her other famous pink dress and gentlemen prefer blondes, so pink became her signature color. The decision to dress Monroe in pink started a huge movement in fashion that has lasted to this day, with girls and women everywhere wearing the color, even Queen Elizabeth. In fact, many believe that the decision to dress the blonde bombshell in pink eventually turned the color into the feminist statement in fashion it is today. Designer Norman Norell created many of Monroe's outfits, but one of his most interesting and meaningful creations is the gorgeous emerald green mermaid dress covered in sequins that she wore to the 1962 Golden Globe Awards. Rumor has it that Monroe also wore earrings that night given to her by Frank Sinatra. As Vogue explained, Norell never received the recognition or acclaim he deserved in the fashion world, so this dress remains one of his best-known creations. Monroe's look was a huge success, and her dress is still considered one of the best red carpet looks in Golden Globe's history. Jeans have always been a staple of women's fashion, right? Well, not exactly. In fact, the acceptance of jeans in women's fashion arguably started around 1961, when Marilyn Monroe famously wore a pair of jeans in the film The Misfits. The Misfits was Monroe's final film role, so she was already established as a fashion icon in Hollywood. Of course, jeans weren't exactly the look that her fans had come to expect, but she made the simple look work perfectly. Though jeans were more commonly associated with farmers and cowboys, Levi Strauss and company later reported that a scene of Monroe wearing their jeans led to a huge increase in sales to women. In just a few years, they became a common look for girls, and jeans have remained popular ever since. In one of her most revealing outfits, Marilyn Monroe donned a tiny green bodysuit covered in a fish scale pattern and trimmed with gold tassels and a black tool train. It was a sexy, seductive look perfect for her saloon performance of That Old Black Magic in the 1956 film Bus Stop. Fans of Monroe probably assumed this was just another outfit created for her by the film's costume designers. 
However, as it turns out, there's a little more to the story. In a 2016 interview on the talk show Lorraine, Martin Nolan, the executive director of Julian's Auctions, explained the significance of the outfit. Apparently, Monroe didn't actually want the costume to feel like a new look, desiring something vintage instead. So she went into the 20th Century Fox costume archives and dug around until she found the outfit she thought best fit the character. Talk about being dedicated to your role! Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more list videos about your favorite movie stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.